I'm happy to have a chance to talk with everyone about our new report about districts taking charge of the principal pipeline. It builds on the Wallace Initiative, as Denise has said, and I'll give you just a quick background on that initiative and what we did to uh, get these findings that I'll be sharing with you. The Wallace Foundation is investing in a district strategy for developing more and better principles, and the fact that it is the districts that take the initiative is super important here. Uh, Wallace is supporting not only implementation but also a test of the impact on school level outcomes. The initiative is a multi-year commitment to six urban districts and here they are, you can see they're large, they're well known for, for their high capacity and that was one uh, a key reason that they were selected to participate. The pipeline model has four major components, developing leader standards, and aligning a lot of other components to them. F improving pre-service preparation, strengthening hiring procedures, and beefing up evaluation and support, particularly for novice principals. Our evaluation, uh, and when I say our, it's policy studies and the RAND Corporation. We're evaluating the initiative for Wallace. We're looking at implementation and down the road we'll look at the effects of the work of pipeline principles on, on key outcomes. I'll be focusing today on the report that we just uh, released last month. It's the third in our series and it takes a look at changes made, challenges encountered, and work that lies ahead in the six sites as of uh, 2014, which is three years into the initiative. Um, just very quickly, where did we get this information? We've been doing site visits and interviews. We've done surveys of novice principals and novice APs in two years. We've also looked at documents and meetings. Let me get quickly to the findings. And again, these come from our latest report, Districts Taking Charge. First, on the subject of standards, all the districts found that having developed, defined their standards and competencies for what they expected principals to do really helped them be strategic and intentional in developing their pipelines. They did align preparation, hiring, evaluation, and support to their standards. This did not actually mean that they were rigid about the standards. They treated them as living documents, they refined them as they went along, and indeed, right now, they expect to continue adjusting their standards. On preparation, uh, Denisa mentioned the program in Denver that's a new district-run program as part of the formal principal preparation. Hillsborough County has had formal district-run preparation programs for quite a period of time, but definitely this is an area in which the districts are investing under the initiative. And for the most part, they see their own programs as a very direct prelude to taking on a principalship. Uh, in folks in Denver call it a transition into the principalship. At the same time, they recognize that much of the preparation it takes place in universities or in many sites, um, alternative programs run by nonprofits. So they've strengthened, the districts have strengthened their connections and their partnerships with those programs. They're looking together at data on program design. They're looking at outcomes. If you talk about preparation, it's clear that assistant principals are critical. That's who is going to be the future principals. When we surveyed novice principals, 84% of them said they had served as assistant principals, and their median time in that position was five years. Similarly, when we surveyed the newest APs, 83% of them hoped to become principals. Districts saw this as a strategic opportunity. They could improve the opportunities that they gave APs to learn leadership and that that would be a way that they could strengthen their principal core down the road. 
Hiring and placement was an area of work that the districts saw as a, giving them direct, immediate leverage over who they could appoint as principals. And they did several things. They added new stages of assessment and selection. They had gateways into a hiring pool or a talent pool. They changed the, their procedures for selection. They gave candidates the opportunity and required them to actually demonstrate their practical skills along the way. They used data for selection planning. They brought those data into high-level discussions across the districts, looking at where their vacancies might arise and who, was, who their potentially promising leaders were. They developed candidate profiles using all those assessments that I mentioned a, a moment ago and compiling those data for use in placement decisions. They were not sure that they had all of the data that they had at this stage. Uh, notably, they wanted to do a better job looking ahead on measuring skills for working with the, the adult community, working with teachers, working with um, parents, and doing a better... Um, the districts wanted to know more about what skills their prospective principals were going to be bringing to that part of the work. In evaluation and support, um, and this is work that's at a bit of an earlier stage, but they are adding principal supervisors, as Denisa mentioned. They're also retooling their principal evaluation. They're developing measurement tools aligned with their standards, and they're working to train the principal supervisors who evaluate principals. Uh, in, in many cases, this reflects lessons they've learned from teacher evaluation where districts have had a chance to learn that the skills that principals bring to measuring their teacher skills can make or break the evaluation system. So sim and now, similarly, they're trying to make sure supervisors are ready to evaluate principals. Finally, they're looking to improve professional learning and support for their novice principals, not only by expanding mentoring and coaching, which they're all doing, but also to use data to tailor mentoring and coaching and professional learning individually so that it's geared to the, the identified strengths and weaknesses of each individual principles. And once again, and, and you'll notice that this is a theme in several of the, of the things that I've said, the availability of new data systems could make this feasible and the districts looked forward to taking advantage of their data. Um, let me leave you with a few kinds of questions that, that could arise out of our findings that a reporter might want to ask uh, a local districts. Um, how are you spotting high potential APs? How are you helping them develop? In the hiring process, how do applicants demonstrate that they can do the job? Uh, have you moved beyond interviews and recommendations to using hands-on assessments? When you look at your new principles, what are the reasons for which some of them are not renewed? And what lessons are you taking from, from that to help new principals succeed at higher rates than maybe they have recently? And finally, assuming you've been doing teacher evaluation for a while, as most districts have, what lessons have you learned from that that you expect to be able to learn to use in principal evaluation? Uh, with that, I'll turn it back to Denisa for, and to the next speaker.